Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 6-4, percent of change. In this lesson you will learn to find the percent of increase and decrease and find the percent error. So what we mean by percent of change is sometimes we have um, an item that we want to purchase and it's on discount for 20%. So we have to see what percent of change it is or we say that, uh, for example, if we have something that's worth $50 and now they're selling it for $40, we have to identify what percent change or what's the percentage of change, and that would be 20%. Sometimes we have an increase um, due to either inflation or our tax that's being applied to a price. And uh, sometimes we also have an error. So, for example, they might say that there's a 30% chance for rain or 90% of chance for rain. Um, and that could be an error and we have to identify the percent error or we have to say, for example, we can be expecting 20 people to show up to a party tomorrow, but only 16 people showed up. What would be the percent error there? Well, that's four or less people. It sounds like that's a 25 percent uh, percent error. But let's let's look at that. OK, so the key concept for this lesson is percent of change in words. A percent of change is a ratio that compares the change in quantity to the original amount. So like I said, we were expecting 20 people, but only 16 people came. Well, the difference is four, right? So we have to identify four out of the original 20 is 25%. So there was a 25% error there. Okay, so it would look like this. Percent of change, that's what we're looking for, is equal to, we take our amount of change, so that four, and we put the original amount on the bottom, the 20. That's how much it changed by change. Amount of change was four. But when only 16 people actually showed up. And the original we were expecting was 20. So then we divide that four divided by 20. Well, we simplify it to one fourth. And we know that one fourth is 25%. If the percent is positive, the percent of change is a percent of increase. That's a positive number if it goes up. If the percent is negative, the percent of change is called a percent of decrease. So if it goes down, let's see, example one. Find the percent of change from 16, 60 Fahrenheit to 84. Oh, looks like it's going up. And our original is 60, right? That's our original number. And it's going up to 84. So make sure that we divide. This will be our number on the bottom. Then state whether the percent of change is an increase or a decrease. Okay, so again, we have to identify what the change is. So we find the difference between the two numbers, right? It went from 60 to 84. What's the difference between 84 and 60? 24. That's our amount of change. So let's use our, our formula. We're looking for percent of change. So percent of change is equal to the amount of change, which we know is 24, with the original amount. The original amount we're starting to count at 60. So what is 24 out of 60 so that we can identify that change? Well, when we simplify, we know that these are both multiples of 12s. So we have two 12s on the top, and we have five of them on the bottom. So when we simplify, it's 2 fifths. And 2 fifths as a decimal is 0 decimal 4, which is 4 in the tenth place. It's the same as saying 40 in the hundredth place, or 40%. So the percent of change is 40%. Since the percent of change is positive, it is a percent increase. So um, let's say today it was 60 degrees and tomorrow is 84. We've had a 20, I'm sorry, a 40% increase in temperature. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try one. This is where you're going to work right now and you will pause it. But first let's read it together. Ty had 52 comic books. Okay, that sounds like an original number. Now he has 61 books. Find the percent of change. Round to the nearest tenth. So the first decimal place, if necessary. Then state whether the percent of change is an increase or a decrease. Okay, pause the video and try this on your own. Pause now. Okay, I hope you pause the video. So let's start by finding first the difference. We have 61 minus 52. Right? We want to figure out what that difference is, and it looks to be 9, correct? 
Okay, I guess if I want to go from 52 to 61, I have to count up not nine numbers or just simply subtract the traditional way. Um, so that's a difference of nine. And now we're going to take um, a formula. So we're going to say percent of change. Let's just write a P of C. Percent of change is going to be our, our change Right, what we said was the amount of change, which is 9, in our original number, which is 52. Sorry, my numbers are a little sloppy. That 9 is sloppy. But I think you understand. Now it looks like a lollipop. Okay. 9 over 52. Now we uh, solve for this 9 over 52. They're both multiples of 3, so I can just divide first by 3, right? Oh, no, they're not multiples of 3 because... Um, in order to identify if a number is uh, divisible by 3, you have to add the two numbers together. And if it gives you a multiple of 3, then it is, but this gives me 7. So it is not. So I can just simply divide the top divided by the bottom. 9 divided by 52 is 0, 1, decimal 1, 7, 3, 0. I'll stop there. Um, and now to convert that into a percent, I have to multiply that by 100, right? Because that's this is a percentage written in decimal, and our answer is 17 decimal three percent. I mean that decimal moves over two spaces when you multiply it by 100, or when you want to make it into a percentage. So what's our answer? There is a 17.3 percent increase. Right, 17.3% increase um, in his comic books. Example 2. McKenna had 318 stamps. Now she has 273 stamps. Uh-oh, looks like it went down, right? This is our original number, and now we have this. Find the percent of change. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Then state whether the percent of change is an increase or decrease. Well, we can clearly see the numbers going down, so it's going to be a decrease. Okay, percent of change is the amount of change over the original amount. Our original amount is 318, and our percent of change is the difference between these two numbers, right? Between 318 and 273. So we just subtract, right? But notice that we are starting, we're subtracting right here um, backwards. Okay, we're, we're going backwards so we can identify um, the, the negative number. You know, you know what I mean? Because it went down, I want to know how much it went down by, and it went down by that many numbers negatively. Correct? So it's going to be a negative number, which turns my whole ratio into a negative. Right? So from 273, the difference, um, 318 is negative 45. I went down by 45, so it's a negative 45 over 318. Then you divide those two numbers, you divide the top, divided by the bottom, and you still keep your negative, and you have negative approximately decimal 141509. When we convert this into a percentage, remember we have to run to the nearest tenth, the decimal is going to move over two places to the right, one, two, and it becomes 14.1. One five, but that port fourteen point one five becomes negative fourteen point two percent. That's the nearest tenth. So since the percent of change is negative, it is a percent decrease. Yep. So it from three eighteen to two seventy three, it decreased by fourteen point two percent. So it's negative fourteen point two percent. Let's try number two. Let's read it together first and then pause. Find the percent of change from 24 points to 18 points. Then state whether the percent of change is an increase or a decrease. Some of you might be able to do this mentally. If you look at this, this number is divisible by 4, right? And the divisibility of each one would be 6, 12, 18, 24, right? And you're counting by, oh, I can't get that. You're counting by six, aren't you? So I went down one of these. I went down a quarter, right? From original 24, I lost six. So if I lost six, six is one quarter. See, it's, it's one, one, one. 
So I've, I have a 25% decrease. But try it. Let's do it. Pause the video and do the steps to show your work. Pause now. Okay, I hope you paused the video. So let's see what we have here. We have percent of change, right? It's equal to the difference between the two numbers where we have um, we have 18 and minus 24. It went down by that amount all over the original number, which is 24, right? So that gives me negative 6 on the top and 24 on the bottom. When I simplify that ratio, I have negative 1 fourth because they're both divisible by 6, right? Divide the top by divide the top by 6, divide the bottom by 6. And then simplify it to negative 1 fourth. And that negative 1 fourth becomes negative 0 decimal 2 5, which as a percentage is negative 25 percent, right? And that's a decrease. Decrease. Okay, so what happens now? We say, if you were writing a therefore statement, which you should because it's a word problem, but it's really hard for me to write with this pen on the screen, you can say, um, it is a 25, therefore, it is a 25% decrease. So if you went from 24 points to 18 points, you drop by 25%. Now let's learn about percent of error. It's our other key concept. Remember, these key concepts, these pink areas are very important to write down. This is the lesson. So if you're going to take anything away from your notes, it should be this plus the examples, the got it sections that you do on your own. Those are very important. Okay, key concept. The percent of error is a measure of difference between an estimate, prediction, or measurement, and the actual value. So percent of error is your amount of error, the actual value, times 100%, so that you can convert it into a percentage. So let's take the amount of error and the actual value. Let's see here. Example 3. It's going to show that. Elisa estimates that her school auditorium has 660 seats. It actually has 750 seats. So this is the actual. What is the percent error of her estimate? So again, what was the error? What's the difference between 660 and 750? Well, let's find that out. It's negative 90. So why is it negative 90? Well, because the actual is 750, but she guessed 6 or estimated 660. That is 90 less, okay, than what it is. So it's a negative. She was off by 90, but in the negative direction, less. Um, it, it, it's an absolute value. Negative 90 is just simply 90. She's 90 numbers off, right? So what can we do? Well, we just say, um, because it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. We're writing it as a negative because it wants down. But we're going to use the absolute value. Absolute value is how far you are from the original value. So 90 seats off. And you can just say that's the difference between those two numbers. Find the percent of error. So you have 90 from the actual, from the actual value. And 90 divided by 750, okay, equals... 0 decimal 1, 2, and then you would multiply that times 100. Now, they put the 100 in here already, but told us that it's this. So this is actually a, a wrong statement. This 100 should be over here. Multiply by 100. The percent of error is 12%. So that should not be in there because that makes this, this statement not true. So 90 divided by 750 is 0 decimal 1, 2. And if you multiply that by 100 then you get your 12%. So there's a 12% error, or the percent error is 12%. I hope that made sense to you. Okay, let's try it. And I believe these are our last two examples before the guided practice. So today's video is nice and short. Let's read number 3A. Estimated, estimated weight, 8 pounds. Actual weight, 6 decimal one four pounds 
Hmm. So the actual, the estimated weight is eight pounds. The actual is 6.4 pounds. Okay. Go ahead, pause the video and try 3A. Pause now. Okay. I hope you paused the video. So let's percent of change or percent of error or simply percent error. Um, I'm not even going to use a P this time. I will just use the word, the actual symbol percent to percent error. Right? Oh my, it's so hard to write with this pen. Is equal to the, uh, the difference, okay, between 8 and uh, 6.4 over the actual 6 decimal. Four. So what's the difference? Um, the top one, it looks like it's 1.6 over 64, and I can already tell, or 6.4, I can already tell it's 1 fourth, because I just pretend the decimal's not there, and if this is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, so it's going to be 1 fourth. Um, I hope you guys can, can see that. So if I simplify that, it's 1 fourth, or you don't even have to simplify it, literally just take your 1.6 and divide it by 6.4, and you're going to get zero decimal to five. And when you multiply that times 100, to make it into a percentage, multiply it times 100, you get 25%. So the percent of error is 25%. Okay. The person was wrong, was off by 25% when guessing the weight. Okay, measured Let's try this one. Measured length, um, 2.5 centimeters. Okay, and the actual length is two dec decimal five four centimeters. So they're off by four hundredth of a centimeter, which would be four hundredth of a centimeter would be one twenty fifth, right? And then we have to just convert that into well, four hundredth is it's four percent, right? Four hundredth, four percent, right? You see it there? That's how much they're off by. Now let's see. It's not going to be. It's not going to be four percent though, because it's not quite that. Okay, let's just do it. Let's do three B. So we have percent of error, and then we have to find the difference is equal to. The difference between 2.5 and 2.54 okay and you guys already know that it's going to be 0 decimal 0 4 that's the difference between this number and this number right because the number here is after the 5 is 0 but over here it's 4 so the difference it just went up by decimal 0 4 and the actual length is 2 decimal 5 4 Okay, so I can see what it's going to be. It's going to be about 1.6%, 1 1.5%. But go ahead, you divide the top, divide, divide it by the bottom. And I get, now remember, you can use your calculator for this so you don't you can avoid the long division. I'm not looking that you know how to divide. I hope you by this point you know how to divide. I'm looking that you um, understand the steps for finding the percent of error and the percent of change increase and decrease and it becomes uh, zero decimal zero one five seven four I'll stop there because we have to go to the tenth when I multiply that by 100 to make it a decimal I mean to make it a uh, percentage it's gonna jump over one twice and it becomes one decimal five seven percent or because we have to run to the nearest tenth right it says right there run, nearest tenth then it becomes one decimal six percent and that is your percent of error all right i hope that makes sense see you on the next video for lesson six dash five